Do y'all actually let poor people on any of these boats? I'm sorry? Do y'all let poor people on any of these boats? Hey guys, I'm out here working on the old Enigma houseboat today, and I need to get some ideas for the interior of this boat because I'm not an interior designer. And I also just want to see how nice boats are built because I've really never been on a fancy yacht before. But the biggest boat show in the world is this weekend, and I've got a ticket. I'm gonna take you guys with me. So that means we're going to Florida. Let's go. Hey guys, I'm at the Miami International Boat Show here in sunny Florida, home of alligators and Florida man and a bunch of big boats. All I wanna do today is get onto one of these super yachts and look at the interior, try and get some ideas for the houseboat that we're restoring. So if you're new to the channel, back in Texas, we've got my old houseboat. It's chopped in half, we're making it longer and we're restoring it. And I wanna get some ideas for what the interior of new boats look like because if you guys leave it up to me, I'm just gonna put plywood back on the walls and paint it turquoise and call it a day. All right, so this boat Apo, it's uh, supposedly the biggest boat that's ever been shown in North America at a boat show. 378 feet long, so best way to put that in perspective is uh, by the Enigma houseboat. So it is seven Enigmas. Boop, 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 boop. Seven Enigmas long. That's, that's a big boat. I do have a question though. What do people do with boats this big? Because I have like uh, 15 friends, maybe 10 actually. And we fit on the houseboat pretty good. When you get rich, do you get more friends? Is that why you need a bigger boat? What do y'all think of these straight up and down bows like this versus the pointy? I think that looks pretty cool. I like this color gray. It's like foam, silent, silent generator. Is that what that is coming out of that thing? Do y'all actually let poor people on any of these boats? Sorry? Do y'all let poor people on any of these boats that can actually sorry. afford to buy them? How does that work? If you came, we didn't have anyone else on board. Right. But right now, no uh, worries. we have a lot of people. Just because, do you know if any of the others let, let you have tours? Or try your luck. Normally, okay, gotcha, <laughs> appreciate it. I had to joke around with her just a little bit. I totally understand because this is the Giga Yacht and the Mega Yacht side of the boat show. And there's 100,000 people coming to this event. They can't let everybody tour these things. They're really trying to sell them. So unless you're a serious buyer of a $350 million boat, you're probably not gonna get a tour of these unless you show up, like she said, when the sun is coming up and nobody's here yet. But there's still hope. The biggest parts of the boat show are the multiple marinas, way over there in the distance. So that's where the air quotes smaller boats are, the 100 foot boats. So we'll see if they're giving tours over there. I think a lot of them are. We'll probably be able to get onto one of those. But this is definitely more our style. What is this thing? This is like, a, man, this is like the dance floor, but it's round. It's got a little hut. This is a floating bar. I've never seen this before. This is awesome. Hey, and I bet you, I bet you these guys here are having more fun than those guys up there on that big ass yacht. I bet you they are. All right, here we go. We'll take this little taxi over to the other side to the main marinas where all the other boats are. in Plymouth, England. Okay guys, so I made it over here to the other side. It's a little easier over here. You just scan a QR code and you can get in. All right, we got a Princess 45 foot yacht we'll start with here. I like the teak table on these, this is nice. I like the helm up here, of course, everything's going fly by wire. Look at this little bedroom here. How do they do this wood? This veneer, it's kind of a matte finish. I like that, it's not real shiny. And then the down downstairs. Oh, this is awesome, this is huge. Okay, this is the master bedroom. 
Man, for a 45 foot boat, this is a big room. Pretty big TV. That's like a 45 inch TV, I'd say. Dometic, so all these boats seem to be going Dometic for the AC systems in the boats. So I'm gonna have to look into them. I, think. I like how roomy it is down here and how bright. We've got these big windows. They got little portholes in them. So you can open that, get in some fresh air. The downstairs on the houseboat is like a dungeon compared to this. Back here at the back, got a mini galley. This is a little microwave, a little three burner stove. That's awesome. Yeah, this is all you need right here. This is great. TV that pops out of the side. It's kind of handy, a little Samsung. I think this is perfect, 45 feet. Got a few friends, We've got two bedrooms down there, two bathrooms, and then a decent little area up here. Got a table, the wood looks good. I don't know if we can do that or not. Oh yeah, see, a little bit of the veneer kind of peeling there. Okay, that's cool though. This flybridge, oh, this is awesome. All right, another table, folds out. That feels like teak, that feels like real teak. Big screens up here. So bow thrusters, that's something I wanna to add to the houseboat. So it's a twin engine boat, and we've always used just the engines, never had bow thrusters. So we would have to ram the boat into the dock and then pivot the front around a lot of times in the wind, because it'd be just too windy. You got the old spinning Garmin radar. It's at uh, head height though, up here on the flybridge. So does that mean you just get blasted in the back of the head with the radar waves? I guess so. Hey, I got that same anchor. The old Delta. Okay, so we found one, one thing so far we have in common with these yachts, the anchor, and that's about it. Oh, this is something else we need to get. A damn windlass. We need a windlass on the houseboat. Right now it's just rope. We pull it up by hand. So we're pulling up like a 40 pound anchor. Half the time it's covered in mud. These aren't cheap either though. I bet this is 1500 bucks. Thank you. Too fancy for me, I'm too poor to be here, man. Okay, that was the 45 foot. Let's try the 66 foot princess. Let's see what it's got. The cockpit is huge back here. This is awesome. They all seem to have the nice little wraparound couch and the fold out tables. I like that, save some room. Okay, this main living area is pretty big. This is nice. Big couch, of course they'll pop up TV. I'm liking that. Captain's chair, you got dual captain's chairs on this guy. Three big screens, two are the Garmin, okay. Okay, this electrical panel is awesome. Wet bar, fresh water pump, machinery lights, everything is labeled, blue, you can read it easy. That is pretty. Oh, a little twin room here, okay. You could totally fit two people in here. It's hard to explain the size, you know, cause I've got the wide angle lens on here, but you know, a normal person can lay on this little guy. Maybe not Cody. It's Cody's six foot five, but got a couple reading lights. That's a good idea. Okay, here's another little side bedroom. Little bunks, got two of them. This is exactly what I was showing you guys on the houseboat, on that mock-up that I did. Little bedroom, get a couple people in here. This is perfect. Bathroom, kind of a white marble. That looks cool. These fancy pop-out sinks like that. Of course, big Garmin screens again. That's what these all seem to have bow and stern thrusters so that's cool check this out on the controls what is this we got command warm-up synchro trolling slip and grip and alarm what is slip and grip or synchro what does any of this mean how much this windlass is. Storm 4000, weir. Okay. All right, in the range, we are about to tour this little guy here. But they go all the way down. Yeah, first of all, a little Rotax sport jet. This thing's pretty cool, a little tender. But the cockpit is huge. Very cool. I think I've seen this before. Yeah, so the logo. 
stays steady while you turn the wheel. Everything must be touch screen. We've only got a few key buttons up here, like anchor up and down, windows. So it looks like it's pretty much all touch screen controls. So really got to trust the touch screens on that. Same thing, they've all kind of got these little double box that they do. For the walls and the ceiling in the Sun Seekers, looks like they go with this vinyl kind of wrap. I don't know how hard it would be to do, especially with the seams like this that they've got. Kind of got the recessed ceiling, LED lighting above that makes it look fancy it's pretty cool over here you got a little nook so you can have your coffee in the morning or set your laptop up and do some work i'm too stupid to open this but yeah got a washer behind here how does this open oh like that splendid look how low these railings are they're just barely above my knee so and they're not very sturdy looking either i like the idea of the houseboat railings coming up almost to your hip so you can lean rock around all day this, you're gonna piece off into the water. All right, so yeah, this dark gray vinyl that they're using out here, Miami, it's 80 something, that's hot. Especially in Texas, where it gets to 110 degrees in the summer. Let's check this one out, the 88, the Ocho Ocho. Oh, they rounded up. That's okay. Okay, cockpit area is huge. Gigantic glass door. So I like this. Everybody seems to do the teak tables. Let's check the flybridge out on this guy. Oh man, flybridge on an 88 foot boat. There's so much room for activities up here. Look at this thing. Woo, boy. Way back there, you can have about 80 people up here if you had that many friends. So yeah, same thing up here. It's like a majority glass cockpit. So they've got some buttons. Okay, these are like waterproof push buttons. MTU engine controls, just a start stop. A lot of this, you're controlling from the screens here, which I think is interesting. I like the idea of having touch screen controls, but with uh, some kind of switch backups that you can get to really quick. Because if your hands get wet or you can't do something on the screens, I don't know, maybe that's not an issue. Look at this though, there's so much room. You can walk back here. Oh man. Oh. Yeah, dark wood again, kind of seems to be the theme. So dark wood and white ceilings, that seems to be the look. And it does look good. Oh my God, this boat is huge. Good Lord. Got a full dining room. go downstairs. Okay, this is about the size of the master bedroom in my house. This is giant. What's back here? Bathroom. Oh, what do you know? Pop-up sinks. Marble white tile. Check out the back uh, headboard there. Big old TV. Oh, for the ladies. Oh, yeah. Old pop-up makeup station. That's nice. The bridge. Look at this. Ah, just one captain's chair. Here's some of your touchscreen controls. So nav lights, wipers, these are all just touchscreen. And if this messes up, where's the backup to turn your nav lights on or the wipers? You know, is there a switch backup for those kind of things? Curious about that. This is like the Amazon USB thing we put in JT's boat. So there you go. Even a Sunseeker 88 has got an old Amazon USB for you. How do we get into the damn engine room? That's all I want to do. I want to see the engines on this thing. Swim deck, gigantic, obviously. This one, it's got a kind of a scuba diving setup. Obviously, we wouldn't use any of this on Lake Texoma because it's mud. It's the Red River. And it looks like we got a little crew quarters here. Let's check this out. Yeah, this isn't bad. I got a little TV, got a little two-person bench, some crew bunks. Let's check these out. Oh, it's nice in here. Even, even in the crew area, pop-up sink. So apparently that's the only way they go, pop-up sink. Is that what you even call it? I don't know, that's what I'm gonna call it. So two more bunks, so you can have a, a crew of four on this boat. During or after, oh yeah. So, yeah, that's what we're doing. Engine room, it's a little warm. All right. Gigantor MTUs, these filters, Oh boy, that's an arm length filter there. Here's the inverters we were talking about getting back here. Victron Quattro. Oh man, this is awesome. There is so much room in this engine room. 
Looks like we got two Cummins owning generators. These engines are freaking enormous. Fire suppression system. That's something we need on the houseboat. Got these engine room ventilation fans back here. So these can kick on to blow the heat out. And they also shut if there's a fire. The prop shafts, it's very hard to tell. They're about four inches in diameter. So that prop shaft is about this big around. Giant prop shaft. Uh, the houseboat, they're one and a quarter inches. So everything is just supersized on this, which you would expect. Look at the headroom we've got. So much room to work in here. This is insane. Got nice lighting everywhere so you can actually see when you're working. I don't know if I was actually supposed to come in here or not, but did it anyway. All right, guys, I'm back here in Texas. It's 45 degrees. I'm going to tell you all what I think of the boat show real quick, and y'all let me know what you think in the comments. First, go to the boat show. It's awesome. Everybody there is nice. Can't recommend it enough. What did you guys think about that $350 million boat, the Apo? To put it in a perspective, if you called your bank and got a loan for $350 million and you paid $1,000 a month on that, which is a lot, it'd take you over 29,000 years to pay that boat off. So even though I'm never going to be able to own a boat like that, I still like the engineering on it and I still know thousands of people got a job because of that boat. All the people that built it, maintain it, there's 36 crew that are on it full time. I really liked all the woodworking they do on those boats. It is nice compared to this uh, like 1980s RV stuff that we've got going on here. So for the bridger, as you guys could see, everything is fly-by-wire now, electronic gauges, a lot of them are touch screen instead of old switches. So, you know, I think we've got some work to do. Here's my number one takeaway from the boat show. I appreciate all these new yachts and all the innovation going into them. But when I saw that piece of crap hut going by, the little floating bar, it just reminded me of all the fun that I've had with my friends on this boat and all our other crappy boats. And so I know no matter what we do to this boat, however it ends up, we'll still be able to have fun on it, even if it's not a $10 million or a $350 million yacht. Hey, so that was just the yachts at the boat show. There's still everything else that was indoors, all the other smaller boats. I found a lot of cool stuff stuff I want to show you guys. I'm going to save that for the next video. So stay tuned for that. Appreciate you guys watching and we'll see y'all on the next one.